good, all right. George Clinton here. I'll be your guide through the Manoverse. Take us to your leader. Mono Neon is a musical messenger of the Dada spirit. Born into a musical universe, Mono's was a world where cities were built on foundations of funk and adorned with microtonal detail. To really know Mono, we should pop this spaceship over to Memphis and get the details from his mama and grandma. I will trust in the Lord. What, six, seven months old, he saw music? Um, being over at my mom's house on Saturdays, uh, my mom would get up and play the blues uh, <laughs> on her stereo, and he was always be moving. And some reason, for some reason, he was always hold his hand this way. For just not that way. Well, however, you <laughs> he would hold his his hand that way, and um, from that time, I just knew something was going to happen because his grandfather and his father was some musicians also. So yeah. He played at the church uh, at age 12, and that's when I realized that's what he wanted to do, and every day it was always music. I've really gotten close to my grandma because of music. The older I get, I'm starting to realize I get a lot from her, especially vocally. Because she took him to church every Sunday. He definitely got that music from her, and I think that's when he wanted to start playing for the church. I always wanted to do something with her, and I just said, Grandma, let's, let's do something, and she was willing to do it. You know? And I just started coming over here and just recording her and singing with her and playing music with her. And I'm yeah. glad he's doing that because yeah. we can go back and look at it later, that she can go back and she can look at what she's done. I love it. But sometimes I get nervous because I don't know what they expect, especially with my grandma because, you know, she's a blues head and I do some other shit. But, uh, yeah. You know, I, it took me a long time to get used to his style of clothing. You still not used to <laughs> it. Took, it took me a long time to say, where is he going with this? So I see now. Because I do want to impress him. I wouldn't be nothing without these two, so, yeah. Okay, come. I said, Mary. <laughs> nothing like a walk down memory lane with Grandma. Next up on this Mono tour, we've got a jam session with Mono's dad, Dwayne Thomas Sr. So let's take the space train over to the studio and see what they got cooking. I know they be funkin'. <laughs> Pretty much started out like each other. They had no formal training, just practicing, listening, imitating, emulating. And then later on, after thinking I know what I was doing, I started adding effects, things that basses wasn't doing at the time. Wah wahs, crybabies, whatever, fuzz. Yeah, I got to work with a lot of people just from being me. You tell me to go right, I go left. So that's why I embrace. What he does, you know, it's out of the norm and it isn't out of the norm, it's something new. You know, his style is his style. Well, I, I've noticed I have, I have a lot of my dad in me. <laughs> I just, I, I, it's really intuitive. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just get it from him. And, and his dad, my grandfather, it's just in me. I don't know, I really can't explain it. That was hard for me to try to do. <laughs> Mono having his own signature bass, I'm not at all surprised. It was gonna happen, you know, and it's gonna continue to happen. And Fender is a company of evolution. It's, it's really amazing. It's, it's definitely a full circle experience yeah. happening right now. So seeing my dad holding my bass is, it's, it's, it's really crazy. He's like my first musical hero. So I just practice all his records. Stuff he played on with Denise LaSalle, Jay Blackfoot, and Rufus Thomas. I used to just try to find anything that he played on and just learn it. I wanted to be like him with the purple bass, the ponytail, the fanny pack, all that stuff. <laughs> I wanted to be just like him. I still do. So that's us. Confused, nice, <laughs> bashful, but <laughs> I think he gets that from me. Yep. 
Wow, that was beautiful. Man, what a touching moment. And now a word from our sponsors. I'll be right back. Let's take a look at the specs of my signature bass. Yeah, that's me right there on the neck plate. Yep. These are my favorite two colors, the high visibility orange and yellow. Because I, I love how the construction workers look on the highway and stuff. You can see them far away. It's inspired by that. Chose to go because I want, you know, to pimp out the bass a little bit. Mm. On this bass, I chose the um, high mass string through bridge because of the sustain. And also the look. I like how, how it looks. I got my own custom mono neon jazz pickups. I chose these humbucking style pickups because I, I like the ground. The 18 volt battery power preamp, so it gives you a lot of headroom. My custom neck, it's a 10 to 14 compound radius C shape on the fingerboard. I have the pearl block inlays. Ain't they pretty? It's nice. It's a simple uh, three band EQ. I've got treble, bass, and mid. And I usually mess around with the mid just to, so it can, you know, stick out a little more whenever I'm playing a certain song or style. Well, that's enough for me. I hope y'all like it. Cause I do, cause it's a great bass. So please, please buy it. Cause it's a great bass and you will enjoy it. Oh, there you go. I'm gone. Operators are standing by, call now. And now, the duo of bullshit. Well, 
You've just about had the full Mondo experience. I think you are ready for some one-on-one time with Mondo himself. Let's do this. I'm actually right-handed, but I play, you know, left-handed because my dad gave me a guitar at four years old, and I, I just, I just start playing this way. My dad's playing has really been a big influence on my playing. He's my first bass influence. He's just a very funky player. Besides the funky and blues stuff, I'm really into John Cage and Stockhausen and Milton Babbitt and all the avant-garde stuff. I met this guy named David Fujinski. Uh, He's into microtonal music. When I met him and I started hanging with him and playing with him, that really inspired me to really connect music with visual arts, like uh, Dadaism, Surrealism, and a lot of just abstract expressionism stuff that I really try to convey when I play. I don't know how to explain it. I just really try to play what I see. I, I want to have like some sort of like visual literacy. So I just try to grab those things and just apply it to music. I really don't know how I got into this quilted shit, but I think it's because of just my childhood and being around my grandma and the comfort and the love. There's a lot of love that's put into um, just making quilts. So I think I just I just feel that. I like to be covered up because it's like a force feel. I like to feel safe. And just quilts, it's just it's just so many patterns and so many designs that you won't find with regular clothes. This whole sock thing just came from Dadaism and Marcel Duchamp and like putting my name on stuff. I just I just really wanted to just be an individual. I'm really just doing me. I don't try to sway people to think this way about me or that way. I just however you want to feel, it's up to you. Woo-wee! We have been on a journey today. That's all from me. Out of here! I'm gone! (laughs) 